Well, before I describe or try to explain how activation energy relates to reaction rates, let's first define and understand what activation energy is. And here I go again using Wikipedia, but this definition is pretty good. So, I'm primarily concerned with you understanding what I just highlighted. So, chemical activation energy is developed by Mr. Arrhenius, and it's the energy that must be overcome in order for a chemical reaction to occur. The activation energy may also be defined as the minimum energy required to start a chemical reaction. It's noted as E sub A, and it's given in the units of kilojoules per mole. Um, activation energy can be thought of as a height or a barrier uh, separating the reactants from the products. This is kind of a heavy-duty thought here, but I'd rather you be hip to this first paragraph primarily. So, continuing my attempt to explain activation energy, I'm going to use OWL3.B to further that explanation. I'm going to click on the information page, and here's a funny looking curve. Let me try to explain this. On the y-axis is energy, so down here will be like low value energy and up here will be high value energy. And the x-axis is not time, it's just kind of like where the reaction is. At the beginning, over here where we have reactants, and at the end, we have products. Okay, no time. So what does all this mean? Well, keep your eye on the black curve, or on the black line of the black curve here. We start off at this particular level of energy with the reactants, and all of a sudden the energy goes up, and then it starts to go down to where we get to be, we have products. All right. Now, oh, there's E sub A. That's the activation energy. So this curve can sort of be like a prescription for a particular reaction as far as how much energy is needed. You say, okay, here's, here's a curve for some reaction, whatever the reaction is. All right. And here's the activation energy needed for this reaction to occur, the minimum amount of energy needed. And the value is whatever it is, say 100 kilojoules per mole. So you know for th this particular reaction, you need 100 kilojoules per mole. Great. If you don't give it at least 100 kilojoules per mole, then nothing's going to happen. All right. You can give it more than 100 kilojoules per mole, but if you don't give it that much, nothing's going to happen. All right. Let's move on and see what else is here. Now, the other cool thing about this diagram is the reactants are at a higher energy state than the products. This is indicative of something called an uh, exothermic or exergonic reaction, where the products are at a lower energy state than the reactants. And the other situation is where the products are at a higher energy state than the reactants. This is called an endergonic or endothermic kind of reaction. Now, check it out. The activation energy here is lower relative to the activation energy here. Now, that's not to suggest that all exothermic reactions, like this one up here, all have lower activation energy. That's not necessarily so. So let me try to a couple problems in OWL. Got kilojoules on the y-axis, and the reaction is two oxygen molecules, which we have right here, gives one O3 and one oxygen atom, which is right here, the products. So the question is, the value of the activation activation energy for the reaction is, and the value of delta E, which is the difference between the reactants and the products, is some number. Well, you have two numbers. Which one are you going to plug in where? Well, the activation energy is always the number from the top of this peak down to the bottom to the left where the reactants are here. So where the reactants are 
at that energy level up to the top of the peak is the activation energy. This is 411. And we're in kilojoules, and that's cool because the unit in the y-axis is kilojoules. Now, the change in energy for the reaction is 392, but you have to ask yourself, is that 392 positive or negative? Well, if this is key. If the products are at a higher energy state than the reactants, in this case they are, it's going to be positive. I could have just left it 392, but if they were lower, then it would have been negative. So let's see. And that's right. And there's some feedback. Try the next one. So here's the recipe for this particular reaction. So what's the minimum amount of energy needed to get this reaction going? In other words, what's the activation energy? It's 132 kilojoules. Because you start off at the reactants right here and you go up to that peak. So the activation energy is 132. Now, the difference between the reactants and the products is 226. And this is a exothermic reaction because the products are at a lower energy state than the reactants. So what's the question here? The reaction as written is exothermic. Okay. Now, check this question out. Assuming the reaction is reversible, ooh, the value of the activation energy for the reverse reaction is, oh, this is fun. So now you have to think about it coming from the right side. So now think of CO2 and NO as the reactants. Ah, so instead of starting here and going up, you're going to have to start from here because these guys are the reactants if you're going backwards. So what you have to do is add 226 and 132 to get the activation energy for the reverse reaction. So this would be 358. All right, let's try another one. So let's try this last problem in this section. Let's see, we have NO and CO2 reactants on the left and products NO2 and CO on the right. Okay. The activation energy for the forward reaction from left to right is 358 because we start here at the reactant level, go up to the peak. So 358 for the forward reaction. The reaction is endothermic because the products are at a higher energy state than the reactants. The difference between the reactants and the products is 226 kilojoules. So what are they asking for? Choose all that apply. The value of EA is 226. Well, not for the forward reaction, so we're not going to check that. The energy of the products is higher than the energy of the reactants. That is true, because the products are up here. We don't know that actual value and the reactants are down here, but we don't really need to know that particular value. We just see that the products are at a higher energy than the reactants. The magnitude of EA for the forward reaction is larger than the magnitude of EA for the reverse reaction. Ooh, let's see. The forward reaction activation energy is 358. Now, the reverse reaction activation energy would be from this point up to 358. Well, that means we have to subtract 226 from 358 to get the actual activation energy for the reverse reaction. So it's clear then that the forward reaction EA is greater than the reverse reaction EA. The reaction is exothermic. That is not true because the react I mean the products are at a higher energy state than the reactants. But that's not true. Oops. The magnitude of EA for the reverse reaction is larger than 358 kilojoules. That's not true from what we just said before. So when we check 
two of these items. And you could read up on the explanation down here.